Хорошо. Thank you. 
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And thank you for joining us for the first virtual annual meeting of the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Crop Improvement, also known as ILC. I am Sarah Adiyama, the program manager coming to you from Cornell University, Ithaca, New York. Earlier this year, before COVID happened to all of us, we hosted a closed door inception meeting in San Diego, where we presented the program's vision, outlined goals and milestones, discussed engagement with other ongoing complementary programs, and opened the conversation for constructive feedback from our advisory committee, program partners, team leaders, and other key scientists interested in supporting ELC. During this annual meeting, we'll highlight the progress we've made since then, among other achievements. I am hopeful that this time will be a time of learning, fruitful engagement, and productive use of your time as we sit back and listen to the series of presentations and panel talks lined up for these two days. Before we quickly uh, run through the agenda for both days, I'll go over a few ground rules. Because this is a meeting style Zoom call, please endeavor to remember to mute yourself on entry into the meetings. And I will ask the audience members to turn off your video and audio. Video and audio can be turned on only when presenting. If you're bandwidth constrained, we may ask you to turn off your video and present as well. During Q&A, if you raise your hands and are picked to ask questions, please unmute yourself turn off your video and ask your questions. For those of us who are not familiar with Zoom, please, to raise your hands, you have to click on the participants tab at the bottom of your Zoom window. And the blue raise hand button is the very first item you would see at the bottom left of the participant window. You can also send your questions through the chat box and we'll try our best to go through them all. Next, I'd like to share with you the agenda for this today's note that the link to the agenda and the Zoom backgrounds that we're all using is in the chat box. Now, um, for day one, we will shortly um, receive a welcome address from ILSI and the Feed the Future, followed by program highlights in our first year from our research team members. And then we'll go on to um, listening to presentations from our newly announced centers of innovation. And we're gonna wrap up with feedback from our advisory committee. For day two, um, we're gonna be welcomed and uh, go through an overview of the innovation lab. And we have facilitated discussions and panel talks on uh, the journey to self-reliance and prioritizing breeding for development impact. And this will be round up, uh, rounded up by um, a summary and feedback from Fit the Future. Without further ado, um, I'm going to move along with the agenda, um, and that is to what is the welcome address from the Innovation Lab Director. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Steve Krasovich. Dr. Krasovich holds a joint appointment with both Cornell and Clemson Universities. Please welcome Dr. Krasovich. Over to you, Steve. Thanks very much, Sarah. First of all, good morning, good afternoon, good night. From Seattle to Brisbane, we are excited to have everybody here. As director of the Innovation Lab, I'm really excited and want to welcome everyone to our session. Today, we'll highlight the Innovation Lab progress, our expanded team and our visions for the future. My brief presentation will take a 30,000 foot view to highlight progress and plans. As background, if you require more information, you will soon be able to view these selected recordings of the entire two day meeting at the ILSI website. Soon you also will be able to view the annual report at the ILSI website and as needed, you can contact me or any team partner for more specific information. I remember when 2020 meant perfect, clear vision. The year 2020 has provided anything but clarity.
Year one is characterized by a combination of excitement and commitment. But with any new program, there's been challenges. Institutional orientation, as you're imagining, recruiting, hiring personnel, building teams. And also there's been a bit of intellectual and operational entropy. With a great team and a number of partners, there's always need for improved connections and improved communications. However, I'd now like to point out progress in a visual context for you. And this is a point of personal pride for me because it highlights significant advancement of the ILSI based on people, groupings, and activities. We've been as strategic as possible. And in year one, we've moved from a concept to an actual global network, focusing on the science of a crop improvement. And I have a quick set of slides just to highlight what I mean. In the beginning, Holly Tufan and I got together from Clemson and Cornell. In April of 2019, it was decided that we working with a great team would start to move forward to prepare a proposal based on the request from the US Agency for International Development. It was really a great opportunity but we were just the seeds initially planted. Over the next few months, we were able to work with people to build the backbone of the team, area of inquiry leaders, cross-cutting leaders, and RTI for monitoring, evaluation, and learning aspects of the proposal. So there we sit in June of 2019 when the proposal was submitted. At that same time, we had a competition for quick win partners, and we'll get more information on that later through the course of the day. In October, late September of 2019, we, were, we got the exciting information that we were funded. So we established our quick win partners based on the competition. We identified a world-class external advisory committee from all over the world, ranging from central US through Brisbane, Australia. And lastly, I think one of the key points to highlight, and this will be presented by Holly later this morning is the significant investment in creating the centers of innovation and establishing the centers of innovation partners. Through this progression, you'll note strategic planning, open competition and engagement, clear communication, a critical commitment to National Agricultural Research Institute or organization leadership. You will meet the leaders today. We also highlighted ILSI service, how our backbone of area of inquiry leaders and cross-cutting leaders will now support the leadership through the national programs and also understanding impact. And over the next year, we'll strive for impact and be responsive for both science and products and engagement. A brief summary of year two priorities. Tomorrow I'll present a more detailed summary of activities to the broader group of participants, but I'd like to highlight a few things here. We intend to invest. We invest intellectual and operational activities in strengthening and launching the centers of innovation, continuing to build with quick wins and invest in new key partners. We will look for targeted and commissioned research projects. For example, would like to land down with another intellectual anchor in Asia. Also to balance our portfolio of commodities that we work with, we hope to identify some programs that focus on root tuber and banana that we can expand our portfolio 
crops that we work with. And as you'll see today and tomorrow, tools, technologies, and methods will be developed and optimized for users. We hope to integrate activities through coordinated communications so that there's strong linkages between areas of inquiry, cross-cutting issues, and potential key partners. Also, our cross-cutting team has done an excellent job of establishing a foundation for training opportunities in cross-cutting issues. They've been active already, and we look forward to a successful uh, 2021 based on the work that they've laid at this point. And an expand. We hope to expand strategic and external partnerships. We've identified people that will speak tomorrow to talk about complementary programs. Lastly, we built and strengthened our institutional capacity building research. We uh, will work with the Tata Cornell Institute for Food and Agriculture for some cross-cutting and really cutting edge research in institutional capacity building and identifying opportunities that we can work with that complement the pipeline based on our areas of inquiry. However, today we highlight progress and plans, but rather than me, I'm gonna finish right now because you'll hear this information from our key team members. The intent is really to show the quality, the vision, and the energy of the unique team that we've built. Just to refresh, the meeting goals are to highlight our vision, progress, and plans, work to build an integrated ILSI, use this forum to get feedback and guidance from everybody, including our advisory committee, potential partners, and USAID, lay the foundation for a strong year two and out years, and identify opportunities to strengthen the ILSI. So with that, I'll stop and finish and move on. We're excited because the next presenter pre-recorded is Nora Lapitan. Nora is an incredible researcher and a great resource for us. She currently serves as a lead for the research community of practice in the Bureau of Resilience and Food Security. In this role, she oversees the Bureau's Feed the Future Research Portfolio, a group of about 20 innovation labs across the world. In addition, she's Division Chief of Input Systems, which supports the development of innovation and technologies from agricultural research and the creation of delivery pathways for those innovations. Um, I've known Nora a long time. She had a great, great record as a breeder and geneticist at Colorado State, focusing on cereal crops important to the Great Plains region of the United States. Prior to joining the USDA, she also had extensive experience as a program director at the National Science Foundation, really leading a cutting edge program in plant genomics. Uh, Nora, uh, Nora will receive the 2020 Distinguished Scholar Award from Crop Science Society of America, and will actually deliver a keynote lectureship tomorrow is what she told me. She's a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Crop Science Society of America, and the American Society of Agronomy. So again, Nora, it's great that you're here, and thank you very much, and I'll pass it over to you. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the first annual meeting of the Crop Improvement Innovation Lab. I'd like to welcome the growing team of the Crop Improvement Innovation Lab, or ILSI. Thank you to the board members for your commitment to this program. Special thanks to Mark Cooper, who is staying up late for this meeting. And to my colleagues from the USA Admissions and the Bureau, a special welcome and thank you for joining us. Finally, I'd like to welcome your guest speakers and other guests, including those from the Innovation Labs and from the Gates Foundation. 
It's only been a year since uh, the Crop Improvement Innovation Lab was launched. And the ILSA team has made impressive accomplishments so far, including the formation of a wonderful set of quick win projects and the recent launching of four centers of innovation. When I read the objectives of the centers of innovation, I thought they were spot on in how to build the capacity of national agricultural research institutions. This is so critical in the journey to self-reliance of these countries. When we put out the call for this innovation lab in early 2019, we stress the importance of finding a team that would provide thought leadership in the area of crop improvement to deliver impacts for increasing agriculture productivity, strengthened resilience, and improved nutrition, especially for women and children. Your team has demonstrated thought leadership in the decisions that you've made especially in your strategy to empower national programs, which will lead to sustained agricultural production and growth. So congratulations. I'm really excited to watch the progress of ILSI. Steve asked me to address the role of ILSI within the Feed the Future program and externally with other partners. Crop improvement is one of the major research investments of USAID. We look to innovations from these investments to provide high yielding, nutritious crop varieties that are resilient to environmental pressures, such as climate-induced stresses and resistance to pests and diseases. So to answer Steve's question, I want to show this diagram of USAID's Crop Improvement and Seed Systems Framework. We invest in all the different stages of the crop improvement and seed systems pathway. And for us, all the stages are part of an integrated and interconnected pathway. Tools and the technologies developed upstream should flow to trait discovery and to breeding and these feed into products that are either commercialized or disseminated through the public sector. Getting products out is critical in order to reach smallholder farmers. Moreover, the framework stresses the importance of clear market demanded target product profiles that inform all stages in the pathway. Target product profiles are designed with input from stakeholders, including producers, consumers, processors, and other actors along the value chain. Although not shown in the diagram, feedback and forward loops between stages ensure that products develop, meet target product profiles, and have a pathway for commercialization and dissemination. So using target product profiles ensures that research and all activities that follow are demand driven. ILSA's role in the upstream part of this pathway is very critical. It provides the foundation for the efficiency and effectiveness of the breeding process. For USAID, these different stages are carried out by different implementing partners or entities as shown here in the blue boxes and who do not necessarily coordinate with each other. So this presents a huge challenge in the coordination of these different stages. And without coordination, the efficiencies we hope for will not be achieved and improve cultivars developed from research and breeding may remain on the shelves. So one way we're addressing this is to use a product life cycle as an end-to-end -end management and decision-making tool. This is similar to how the private sector approaches end-to-end -end product development and commercialization. 
So we intend to uh, further socialize this product life cycle with our colleagues in the missions and with our implementing partners. But just to uh, describe the product life cycle. So we developed it to capture the various investments that USAID makes and where our implementing partners contribute in the different stages of the framework. The framework includes 11 stages that start from the design of a target product profile to research, product development, commercialization, adoption, and phase out. Outcomes that need to be achieved before moving on to the next stage are indicated in the second line. What is not shown in this um, figure is our criteria that need to be met before products move on to the next stage. It is a stage-gated approach that helps us in managing programs. The framework will help us understand where our implementing mechanisms work and where connections need to be made in order to ensure an efficient system that de delivers market demand-driven products that have a pathway for scaling and commercialization. So what is ILSI's role? The products that come from ILSI contribute to shortening the product life cycle for the entire process. So this implies that it's critical to, have, to share products and coordinate with other partners in the pathway. So the partners include the national programs, CGIAR, other innovation labs, and the missions. And you're already building strong connections with national programs. And that's great to see. So I encourage you to think of ways to coordinate with others that I have mentioned. I think the presence of colleagues from the missions and the Bureau, uh, the CGIAR and other innovation labs present a great opportunity to have those conversations. I'm looking forward to the discussions in the next two days. Have a great meeting and thank you so much. Thank you very much, Steve and Nara for that beautiful 